at the 15. He's on his feet. 10, 5, touchdown. The Jake Nolf Show. Go Burrow. And welcome once again to the Jake Nolf Show live from Charlie's Pub and Eatery, Route 99, just past the lake in Edinburgh. What, episode three and, and coach... It, there's not we're, we're not in the business of moral victories no we're not but so let's not try to do that Shepard's good football team very good football team. and we went uh, I, don't know, I don't know what the play count was but all but maybe seven or eight um yeah and we're we, we talk about improvement yeah. uh, let, let's let's get into some of the the nitty-gritty here beyond the win beyond the win, the win the loss but as you continue to move forward, if you're not getting better each week, what was the biggest thing that you took? Because we always talk about week one to week two yeah. is the biggest jump. What was the biggest jump from week one to week two? Well, I, you know, I think that the Duquesne game, size, speed, you know, seeing that opponent week one got us ready for Shepard week two. And, you know, I thought that, look, we didn't give up any sacks. We gave up six the week before. So huge. You know, we rushed for 188. You know, we literally had zero turnovers, and we took it away three times. So we were plus three in the turnover margin, which was huge. Um, third down efficiency, we were operating close to 45%. You know, we were two for two in the red zone. Um, they made a lot of plays. We tried to match that. Unfortunately, you know, they big played us a little bit, and we you know, ran out of time or whatever you want to say. We had every opportunity to win that football game, but hats off to Shepard and Coach McCook. And, you know, they, they, they closed us out. Um, I loved our effort, Joe. I mean, physically, you could tell we played a football game on Saturday watching that film. It was big hit after big hit, punch after punch. That was the thing where I thought Duquesne had us on our heels week one. And Shepard, our guys, we learned from week one. And we got significantly better week two. We did a lot of really good things in all three phases. But unfortunately, Shepard just did them a little better than we did. Now, the, the other thing that, again, I know that you don't necessarily want to hear this. But from the eye test and, and where you are in terms of improvement, yeah. you fall down early. Yeah. Then you have a lead. You fall, back, you fall behind again. You tie the game again. It was a back-and-forth affair. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not certain that last year your football team does that with anybody, let alone Shepard. And gave – I mean, it was a terrific back-and-forth game. You mentioned punch, counterpunch. The end. How yeah. pleased were you in that regard that your guys kept getting up off the mat and firing back? Oh, it was, that was the thing that I, I was disappointed with, and I addressed our football team with it, Joe. You know, we don't sugarcoat anything. I'm honest with them. And I was disappointed week one with our lack of energy and our ability not to counterpunch. And we did that. We certainly counterpunched. We had a ton of energy on the sideline, which was great. The home crowd at Sox Harrison Stadium, I thought, was outstanding. Um, we were able to settle in and play football. And when they made a play, we just hit the reset button and played the next one. We also made a lot of big plays. I mean, I know you're going to mention the forced fumbles on defense, the long runs by Trobel, the long run by Matt, you know, the ability to be efficient on third down, you know, they just – that receiving core, and they – man, they had a lot of 50-50 balls that we were just on the short end of it, and they made some really good throws and catches. Yeah, I've got a bunch of copy points that are about to run together, but it, yeah. all, it all works out. Right. We always talk about splash plays. Yeah. Always talk about splash plays. Sure, a lot easier to compete in football games when you're making splash plays, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Absolutely. You know, you mentioned the, the two runs by Brian – I think one was, what, 38 and 36? 30, yeah, 38 and 36. Just well executed from the read, from our offensive line, and then Brian's ability to run to daylight. I mean, you kind of hinted to that in these first two shows about Brian's big playability, and we saw it a little bit against Duquesne. Well, now it was on full display on Saturday. The thing that I love about Brian Trobel is he's not only a home run threat, he can drop his pads and run physically on you, but he's a tremendous pass blocker. You know, he prides himself on the ability of being a three down back. And that's a credit to him and, and Coach Fernandez, who obviously is our running back coach, has done a great job in getting him not just in the run game, but blitz pickup and in the pass game. He's got him really dialed in. Now, if there is the aha, uh -huh, that's it. And very rarely 
can you just point and say that's why you win or lose? You you alluded to the fifty fifty balls. Yeah. And it the worst part is it, it's I don't know. I damned if you do, damned if you, you don't prefer to be beat. But there was a lot of instances where guys are in the exact spot using the exact te- techniques that you coach up yeah. and not making the play. I mean, is that just the tip of the cap? Or now that you've watched the film, is there something in particular that you've picked up on? Well, you know, I think the biggest thing is, that, Joe, it always gets down to our fundamentals and our technique and especially our eye discipline. Um, there were some instances where we were out of position and we were caught staring, to be quite honest. But there was also instances you tip your hat to them because their quarterback and receivers, they put the ball in the perfect spot and they made big time plays. And, you know, I know from talking to Coach McCook after the game, you know, he'd mentioned that was the biggest difference for them from week one to week two was their inability to get on the same page. Well, unfortunately for us, they got on the same page. And, you know, their quarterback made a lot of really good reads and put the ball where only their guy could get it. Now, the other, the other thing that I, I thought was the, the second takeaway, and I think this speaks volumes to the maturing of Rich DeMeo as a play caller, Rich DeMeo as uh, a, a scheme, And when you kind of bring in your backup quarterback after an injury that he didn't necessarily prepare to be the, and it, it was, it wasn't seamless. It was different, but it was seamless. Yeah. I I thought that, I thought that was great preparation. It really speaks volumes to how much better you are when you can make, I mean, that, that, yes, they're both big bodied quarterbacks, but they're both very different quarterbacks. Yeah, absolutely. And look, and coach DeMeo has been calling plays for a long time and, Credit to him and Coach Hall. Like I mentioned, you're right. You know, we're a different offense with Matt in there. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. Isaac showed tremendous maturity, tremendous growth. You know, it's tough to come off of the bench, especially when he was the starter. Yeah. And I was really proud of how Isaac handled himself and obviously performed on Saturday. Um, The ability to take what the defense gives you, I thought was his biggest asset on Saturday, was, you know, Sometimes when you try to force the ball, Joe, and we saw this a year ago, you make bad decisions. I thought his decision-making was very spot on. He managed the game very well. He made a couple of really nice throws. You know, the one to me that stands out is the hop down the same, you know, yeah. literally down our left sideline. He put it on to give ourselves a first and goal, and Keon Anderson punched that one in. It was a really good job by Coach DeMeo, Coach Haw, Coach Fernandez, Coach Wells. Those guys – and. Look, I have conversations with my staff. We're, we got to get better every week as well, Joe. And the ability to make in-game adjustments, I thought the communication on the headsets, especially in the second half, I mean, look, the two touchdown runs that Trouble had, Joe, were the same exact play. Just one was to the right, one was to the left. And, again, the ability to come back to something when it's working mm-hmm. was, again, really good job from the offensive coaching staff. But, look, you got to give credit to the kids, you know, as a co- look, and I tell everybody this all the time, and the reality is, look, football's a game that everybody thinks they know but know nothing about because they watch it in high school and they watch it on Sundays. Coaches coach, players play, fans cheer, and when we dial something up, we trust our players to execute it, and they did a tremendous job of that on Saturday. Unfortunately, there were some instances where Shepard just did a little better than we did. Now this you I I don't know this but you spend an awful lot of time in on special teams and I don't yeah. I don't know where that ranks with with everybody else but you know part of you has to be a proud papa uh, you've got a what a forty six yard field goal you've got a, a punter that averaged forty seven point three yards a punt yeah. on seven tries three yeah. were fifty plus oh, it's good to telling me this joke because all I can keep <laughs> thinking about is a hundred yard kickoff the, but that's you got a two point conversion when you need it to tie the game yeah. Then, let's be honest, Thad lost his mind for a second. You had the 100-yard return. Overall, again, you're an you're a equal third guy in terms of the preparation. Yeah. Does outcome aside, you know, the improvement versus how pleased were you with your execution when you had to do it? Yeah, I mean, look, the, the unfortunate – you never know which play is going to decide a football game. We took the lead, and they literally took it right back on the yeah. ensuing kickoff. Um, I can tell you this. Which, by the way, I've never seen a running back hurdle four would-be tacklers in one hurdle. That was 
Brown made a tremendous yeah. play. It's, it's not that you didn't have guys where they right. needed to be. However, I mean, he made a play. We didn't execute. I can promise you this. We will work harder. We will be more diligent. And those things can't happen, especially in a game of that magnitude. You know, we can't have any quote unquote hiccups, especially in the third of the game as special teams, because we know how much we pride ourselves in that area here at Edinburgh. You said something last week that I thought was very telling. Our best players need to play like it. Yeah. And again, we're Shepard is a very good football team. It's a it's this is not a one hit wonder. This is decade plus. Yeah. They're a very established, yeah. well disciplined, well coached, tremendous skill, big physical, you name it. I mean, look, there's a reason that they won the region super region one final, you know, yeah. championship last year. Uh defensively, I know you gave up yards, but so, sometimes sometimes splash plays can can keep and negate yards, which yeah. I sort of felt and you made a pot what was it? Um Four forced fumbles and interception. You only had one sack, but there, that was the only sack of the game, by the Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Um, yes, you got chunked the 50 50 ball, but the splash plays defensively brought you in or, or got you there, and it was your best players playing yeah. like the best players to do that. Boy, it was Malcolm Will Johnson Fredo. with 11. Yeah. Fredo Diaz was incredible. He, he was all over the field. Yeah. Um, you know, the crazy thing, you mentioned the four forced fumbles. The two that we didn't get. That thing was uh, we that, just that one bounced. fumble was in the air longer than seven and then Reed Martin's seventy three yard punt. I have no idea. It felt like it, didn't it? It was uh, it was just hovering. Yeah. You know, and that's a credit to you know, Coach Papley and the defensive staff challenged us defensively to be more physical than we were in week one. And you know, those forced fumbles were because we were physically hitting them. In the sweet spot, you know, we weren't going low. We ran through guys, and w they were forced fumbles. I mean, they were, were violent collisions that we pride ourselves on playing defense. And, you know, whenever you can do those things and gain three possessions for the offense, you know, generally that goes in your favor. We just came up on the short end of the stick, but you mentioned Diaz. You mentioned Malcolm Johnson. You know, Ty Thornton, only, we only had the one sack, but I can tell you this, there were a couple quarterback hits that Ty Thornton had that, and Zach Malpica that, you know, quarterbacks remember those plays. Yeah. So it, there were a lot of really good things. The positive part about Saturday, Joe, was they're all correctable mistakes. And it's Monday. We had a great practice tonight. So... There's no hangover. We're not feeling sorry for ourselves. We understand this is a long season. We've got to take them one at a time. And we know that the most important one in front of us right now is Bloomsburg. I'm really proud of our football team and the way they battled on Saturday. However, like you said, there's no moral victories. A loss is a loss. We tip our hats to those guys. We're going to learn from our mistakes, and we can't wait for the opportunity this week. Yeah, football's a lot like golf. You shoot 69, and you lay in bed at night thinking it could have been 67, right. and that's, that's exactly where you're at. I mean, you, you walk away from a game against that caliber of opponent, and if you even have some sense of, of football sense about you, yeah. what if has got to be the first thing that comes to mind. Absolutely. You know, and that's going back to your special teams comment where – you know, I felt like, I mean, you know, there was two kickoff returns in the second half that we pop out across the 45 to give our offense a short porch and, you know, a short field where, you know, we didn't have that counter punch. I mean, we did against Duquesne, but unfortunately you don't see it on the stat sheet because there was a penalty. But I like the way we kept battling, Joe, and we've got a tough group. We've got a tenacious group. And, uh, you know, I'm really excited, to, again, to watch us get another opportunity to play on Saturday. All right, a quick timeout. We come back. Nathaniel Rivas, uh, one of the guys that uh, doesn't get a whole lot of credit, an offensive line that played very well. No sacks against the number 14 team in the country. Some big plays. We're live at Charlie's Pub and Eatery. This is the Jake Knowles Show. Back with more right after this. At the 15, he's on his feet. 10, 5, touchdown. The Jake Knowles Show. Go Burrow. Back here at Charlie's Pub and Eatery, the Jake Knowles Show. We're here each and every Monday night, and we appreciate uh, Billy and the whole staff for being as gracious as they are to have us. And of course, uh, each and every week we are here just past the lake on 99 in Edinburgh. Nate Ribas, the center, kind enough to, to join us here in the uh, this portion of the program. Nate, I don't know if you ever thought about this, but you and I have a lot in common. Yeah. Yeah. 
nobody ever tells me I do a good job. They just always tell me when I mess up, <laughs> just like you, the center. Very rarely, but that ball is a little high, then they're yelling at you. You make a lot of the calls, man. That was as good a performance I've seen from your offensive line in a long, long time. What was different on Saturday? Well, I think all we can practice, we really emphasized being urgent and being 100% on our assignments and being physical and next play mentality. Like if we messed up, we knew we had to go on to the next play. No hanging our heads down. We got to move on. Now, you're, you're a veteran guy. Obviously, you've been without Hull Slander uh, this week. But you've got two freshmen. And generally speaking, at this level, when you have two freshmen – that are forced to play on the O-line, that becomes a liability. <laughs> That's just the nature of the beast. This is a big boy league. Wengstrom and Brown have not been liabilities. How, how much can you attest to your veteran group that can offer them some leadership? Because, again, I, don't, I can't think of a, an instance where they've been really exposed and it was like, obviously, oh, that's a freshman out there. Yeah, you know, we've, been, we've just been kind of uh – coaching them up a little bit ourselves um just from our experience like if we made a mistake on a play like we'll tell them hey like we've done this before and like this is how you should go to not make that same mistake now how much how much easier does it get when you have as many as many starts as many reps and you're starting to get some continuity obviously the you know hopefully we get Gabe back sooner than later but when you're starting to get some continuity how much easier does it get I mean because by and large you know it's been the same with Gabe being the ex- it's been the same guys basically since the jump at camp yeah so when you start for a while you know you don't have to think as much and I guess that's the biggest thing you just know your assignments and it's just second nature to you now the one thing that I did want to ask you with, with Carlisle being way more prone to running how much more disciplined do you guys have to be in the rpo game knowing that you know the illegal man downfield penalty is going to be the one that is going to have somebody throwing a clipboard on the ground because it's maybe the most frustrating penalty but how different is that with with carlisle versus ike because that is that's always such a gut punch penalty yeah you know we definitely got to be aware and we've been during camp we've been uh trying to be aware of that as well like I during camp there several times that I caught myself like five six yards downfield on a RPO and I was like oh darn like I gotta do better and be aware now when when you take where you were after Duquesne now to where you are after Shepard it a loss is a loss you're you're owing to you know we always talk there's no moral victories how much better are you this Monday night than you were last Monday night or the Monday night beforehand? Um, you know, like, I feel I feel better. But, like, like you said, at the same time, there's no more victories. A loss hurts. And my mentality is someone's got to pay. And we're looking to Bloomberg for that. Now, again, when you look at the outcome last year, statistically, it was, it was night and day. The, the boys, by and large, got to be buying what they're selling. I mean, this in a in a short turnaround, you guys are a much much different team. And I, I'm gonna I'm gonna circle back to Rich DeMeo and Ike coming in the second half. I don't want to say this was seamless because it was different, but it was seamless in the same sense. Yeah. I don't think that happens last year. No, I feel like last year we would have had a lot bigger hiccup and some communication errors that would have made us um, like not as succeed as well. Now I'm I'm always curious. Um, you've been here a while. What uh, what 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 brought you to, to Edinburgh? And you know what was that? What was the process like to, to get here? And now that you're here, I, I will say this: you're very lucky. It has not snowed that much in in recent winters, so you sort of dodged that bullet. But you know what what was the process that got you here? And you know what what's your major? You know, tell us a little bit about yourself off the field. All right. So my major is I'm an exercise science major, um, and what really got me to Edinburgh was. I really liked the area. Um, I'm not a huge fan of being really hot, and it's definitely cold here and a lot of snow. So it's really friendly for us bigger linemen. Um, I also really liked Coach Nolf. He seemed to have really good energy and really care about improving the program. I, I, I did want to ask about that energy. What was different from Duquesne to Saturday? Um, I mean, was it as simple as it being as hot as it was? 
knowing you're playing up. Like, but it was a, a different vibe. Like even e- even on the field pregame, like it it felt like you know it, this was a probability to get, to get a win. What what was so different in the energy department? You think? I think this week in practice, just I we put it on ourselves to bring that energy. Like we didn't rely on other people. Like we just focused on every each person has to bring it. Now, when you when you look to Bloomsburg, um, you know. It, Grand scheme of things, Bloomsburg still doesn't matter. It's it's the West, you know. That's yeah. you got to, but you are zero and two. I think you've gotten a lot better from week one to week two. Overall, you guys have to be pretty high, all things considering, as you get you know your last crossover game. Well, your second to last crossover game before you get into PSAC West play. Yeah, so we are feeling pretty good. We're. I feel like we're trending up, or we got to keep it that way. So, like every week, just keep going up and up. Well, certainly uh, the wins come from leadership like yourself, and uh, not allowing a sacks a good way. Good way to start, and uh, best of luck against the Huskies. Thank you. All right, more to come. The Jake Nolf Show. We're live at Charlie's Pub and Eatery, Route 99, just past the lake in Edinburgh. We're going to look ahead to those Huskies and a trip across I-80 with Coach Nolf when we come back. Yes. At the 15, he's on his feet. 10, 5, touchdown! The Jake Nolf Show. Go Burrow. Well, welcome back to Charlie's Pub and Eater. It's the Jake Nolf Show. We're live here each and every Monday night. We thank uh, the good folks here for coming out. Also, of course, Billy for being so gracious. And we look forward to... What are we going to have for dinner? Have you thought about that yet? No, you know, this is more important right. than our dinner right well, I'm now. I'm pretty hungry, so I don't know. <laughs> anyway, all right. Looking ahead, Bloomsburg Huskies uh, make the trip east on I-80. Yeah. Um, they're coming off a win last week against Clarion. I, I don't know. The, the, the one number that jumped out at me, I don't care who you're playing. This is still Division Two football. They had four interceptions. Yeah, they are a very tenacious, stingy defense. Uh, they're big. They're physical. They're active. You know, they play extremely fast. They play downhill. Their secondary does a great job getting their hands on you, making you feel uncomfortable. Um, it's a veteran group. A lot of these guys played against us last year. Um, you know, Coach Shep talks got them rolling, man. I mean, like you said, anytime you can get four interceptions in a game, it's got your attention. And, and honestly, you know, they were in a barn burner week one against Fairmont State, yeah. ended up losing it at the end. Uh, this is an experienced group. This is a group that prides themselves on being physical like we do. You know, they're going to try to run the ball on offense, and they're not going to let you run the ball on defense and try to make you one-dimensional. So, you know, we've got to be really, really on our details this week, Joe. Yeah, Danny Hale may not be there, but the name's still on the stadium, and they're still going to play Bloomsburg football. Uh, Monaco has been a stat stuffer. And let's not – Boy, right. is he an explosive back, the, by and, the way. And then let's – you didn't really see it in the stat line – week or last week but KJ Riley had two rush the quarterback had two rushing touchdowns so he's yeah. clearly a dual threat guy too so they've got two playmakers coming out of that backfield a lot of these guys again were it's a familiar opponent because we played against them last year in a tough uh, game at Sox Harrison Stadium so you mentioned Monaco you know the guy that is like a utility knife for them is the Nas Jones number three big physical he plays tight end he plays fullback. He plays slot receiver. They flex him out wide. You know, and he, he's pretty – for a big guy, he's very athletic, and I think they do a really good job of getting him involved in the game plan. Now, I don't, I don't want to mispronounce his name wrong, and then he, uh, you know, gets really angry, but uh, I assume it's Goats, the linebacker. Number 56. Number 56. Wow. That guy. Yeah. I mean, how often do you see a linebacker with two interceptions? But he was all over the – he had five tackles, a sack, and two picks against Clarion. Um, you know, obviously a pick six to start yeah, the game. Yeah, second was it second play of the game? Yeah. I, I imagine that's a guy that goes mano a mano with a tight end. I would think just based on you know a linebacker with two well, picks, but so they move them around. They do a really good job of keeping them stacked, and then they'll put them down as an overhang and an edge. And he drops in pass coverage. He blitzes. He, he literally, their D coordinator does a really good job of mixing up their scheme. You know, they play single high, cover three, man free. But then they'll also get into some fire zone principles. They play some quarter, quarter, half. They play straight quarters. I mean, this is a pretty multiple style defense. Now, when, when you talk about, you know, when you go 1v1, at, because the reason I, you, we've, we've got Dugan. 
They've got their version of Dugan uh, Cancero at six two three fifteen. Wow, and he I, moves well. You know, I wanted I had that on my notes to ask Mr. Rivas about that. You know that how much preparation to have your own big guy like because that sort of athleticism and that size you can't prepare for, but you can. Yeah, absolutely, and that, that's you know what, Joe. Credit to you, and that's a pretty. I mean, that's a spot on comparison. When you turn the film on against when you watch Bloomsburg, ninety nine flashes everywhere yeah. the kid has a tremendous motor the other thing you're going to see is not just him they play like six or seven defensive linemen that's a deep group um, they come at you in waves their linebackers are downhill and physical i had mentioned that I, you know a lot of respect for their secondary their corners the safeties are playmakers and look at them on the stat line joe i mean they're big physical guys they do a really good job playing man to man they do a really good job of running the alley and run support um you know, we, we are going to have our hands full here Saturday out at Bloomsburg. This is a very balanced, physical outfit. Um, they're, they've got a lot of miles on the tires, as I like to say, because they have in-game experience. You know, their quarterback was a true freshman last year, played against us. He's a dual threat kid. Their offensive line is big, nasty. They've played a lot of guys there so far. Um, you know, they want to get downhill on you. Their run game will set up their RPO play action. So, I mean, this is going uh, uh, to be an in-the-trenches type of football that, that's game. That's where I was going next. I think at, in one of the games, Riley was only like 14-20. to 20. So, this, even, like I said, even though Danny Hale's still fingerprints are all over right. this thing, they've not, they've not changed a whole heck of a lot. And they will line you up and knock you over. That's yeah. been who they are. Yeah. How important is defensive first down efficiency going to be for you guys? Oh, it's going to be everything. They are an efficient offense. Now, Joe, what do you mean by efficient? Well, they get themselves in manageable third downs so their quarterback can be efficient in the pass game or they can run him or they can run their plethora of backs between Monaco and Pringle. Um, they like to stay on schedule. So the battle up front our O-line versus their D-line, their D-line versus our O-line. I mean, that's the tail of the tape. Now, it'd be great, unlikely, but if you could, if you'd be 45% on third down for the rest of the year, things yeah. are going to be looking good here in, uh, in the borough. But that being said, that's an unrealistic ask. I mean, if you could be, what, 30, 35 is pretty good, right? It's, yeah, that's about average. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we certainly want to trend in the 40-plus. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. again, that's very difficult to do. But how much better do you feel about things, Trobel? We know what, um, and hope, hopefully Carlisle's good to go. We, we know what that run game brings to the table. And I, and I wanted to ask you a little bit about that flexibility because I thought the biggest thing, not obviously we'll do Kane aside, but last week, first down efficiency on your end, yeah. the, the play calling got to be a lot easier. It's, yeah, you have a lot of plays in your offense in second and short and yeah. second and mediums compared to second and long and then third and long, which was our Achilles heel against Duquesne. Um, you know, that's – if you, it's funny. Look in the mirror, right, because they want to run the football. We want to run the football. They want to stop the run. We want to stop the run. So this is going to be a really interesting matchup. We're really excited about the opportunity to head out 80 and – coach against a you know a really physical outfit like I said coach Frank has done a really good job you can tell he, he's got hired when I did so this yeah. is his third season my third season and you know I don't know much about Bloom before obviously you're Mr. Peace Axe so I always refer to you with their plethora of knowledge but you know they he does a really good job his staff does a really good job um, you know like I said they're 16 seconds away from being two and oh all right, we got to give the people what they want. They don't come to Drum listen. Drum roll, please, anybody, they right? Don't come to listen to me. They, two reasons we win, two reasons we lose. You, 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 honestly, I know golf's your game, but this was set up on a tee box, Joe. I appreciate that. When you look at it, staying out, again, who's going to stay ahead of the sticks, right? So third downs and third manageables, number one. You know, if we can stay ahead of the sticks and we can get them behind the sticks, there's tail number one. Number two, take a guess, turnovers, Yeah. right? I mean, we've got to continue to take the ball away and not turn the ball over and give ourselves the opportunity to, to gain those possessions on offense. So uh, those are the two biggest tales. When you look at a year ago, you know, this is a game we won in overtime. We turned the ball over. 
but we took it away. Remember? Yeah, yeah, there yeah. was back and forth, turnover after turnover. So if we can continue to take the football away and not turn it over, you know, again, those are the two biggest signs for Saturday. And certainly, obviously, you, the, the turnover difference last week is what kept you in the ball game. You know, Absolutely. They, they made more splash plays, but you were making defensive splash plays, which certainly gave you a chance. All yep. right. We are about done here. want to remind everyone it's a 2 o'clock kick, so airtime on the Fighting Scots Radio Network presented by EerieInjury.com. The Hobbs Lumber pregame show will be 1 o'clock or just after 1 o'clock, and we will have all the play-by-play. Nate Hartung and I will be making the trip, ready to rock and roll. Uh, thanks again to everybody for coming out, especially uh, Billy Carell and the whole staff here at uh, Charlie's Pub and Eatery just past the lake in Edinburgh. Always good food. Looking forward to Can we talk about what we're going to eat now? Now, nah, where do we close off camera? Right, there we go. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll do it again next week. Uh, best of luck to you and your football team. Safe travels. Uh, we'll see you Sunday morning or Saturday morning. Uh, thanks, Joe. And go Close. Burrow. At the 15, he's on his feet. 10, 5, touchdown. The Jake Nolf Show. Go Burrow. <laughs>